Hi, Akshay. I have an intersecting pipe model that I would like to mesh with hexahedral elements. Can you help me with that? Sure. Uh, the first step uh, to mesh something with hex elements in this case would be to create partitions through the, uh, the intersecting pipe. So in this case, we might have to create uh, either two or three partitions so that we can mesh each separate partition with uh, hex elements. Okay. So we can do that. Uh, but before I even start showing you the process of partitioning, I'd like to show, I'd like to explain something uh, called as volumes. So we'd be, we'll be essentially creating something called as volumes and we'll be working on those volumes to create partitions, but not on the solid that you're seeing right now. The, the difference between solids and volumes. So anything and everything that you create, uh, if it basically is placed under the part body in the specification tree, then it's essentially referred to as a solid. When you create a surface, say for example, you, you have just the outer surface of this pipe. And then if you end up creating a volume from that surface, then the surface and the volume, both of them go and place themselves under something called as a geometrical set, which is not a part of the part body, but it's a separate container holding all surface and surface related entities. So we'll be, so no matter, so you can create how many of surfaces and how many of volumes you want. And all those surfaces and volumes will not affect the solid under the part body. So, so technically if you see, you can create how many ever versions of, you can create how many ever volumes you want and you still, you know, the, the changes don't backtrack. They don't go back to the solid in the part body. But if you make any changes to the solid in the part body, it automatically affects all the children. It automatically affects all the surfaces that have been created using the solid. It automatically affects all the volumes that have been created using the surfaces. So we'll be essentially working on, uh, we'll be working on volumes to basically create the partitions. And then I'll, I'll show you how to uh, basically mesh each partition with hex elements. And then I'll show you how to tie the regions together so that the you basically can account for all rapid mesh transitions. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So by default, when you import a part, uh, it automatically opens in KTA part design. So the first step would be to create a finite element model representation. So it'd go into V plus R. Scroll down all the way. You have structural model create. So click none as your method of initialization. So as you can see that all this, all this, all these features are there under the part body and we still don't have any surfaces. So there's no geometrical set. So I'm just going to minimize this and I'm just going to keep this active. So here from the fixed area of the action bar, switch to the meshing context. Once you're in the meshing context, you'll have access to an app uh, or another context called as model prep. This takes you to an app uh, called as Ketia simulation model preparation. This app specifically is used for repairing geometry or, you know, creating, uh, doing partitions, so on and so forth. Any, any repair work that you have to do on your existing geometry, be it native or be it imported, you can use this app to basically uh, perform all these operations. So in this case, we'll be creating volumes using this app and uh, we'll be doing the partitions using the same app. Um, so there's one important setting. So when, when it comes to creating volumes and surfaces, uh, you will end up with a lot of surfaces and surface related entities. Now, by default, when you, when you have your client installed and when you're trying to create something, uh, maybe a surface related entity or a solid or a solid that you have, um, all of them will be stacked under part body by default. So by default, so this is known as hybrid design. So when a part is created as a hybrid part, all the, all the entities are stacked under part body. If you have to place surface entities into a geometrical set, you would have to do it manually. That's, that's the default behavior. Okay. So I'll show you how to go and change that behavior such that it automatically puts all the surface and surface related entities in a geometrical set by its own. You don't have to do it at all. Great. So that will be extremely useful when you have 
when you have to sort out and pick the right surfaces, um, it, is, it is easy to arrange it. So if you go into infrastructure and 3D shape infrastructure, and here if you click on the 3D shape tab, so I've already done this setting, but I'll just tell you how to do it. So in hybrid design, it says enable hybrid design inside part bodies and bodies. So which means that when created, local wireframe and surface elements mm -hmm. are always going to be in a body, which is, this is the option by default, if mm -hmm. you had opened it before, but I changed it to, into a geometrical set so that all the surfaces and surface related entities will all be placed automatically. So when you, so say for example, you're creating a surface entity and suddenly you want to create a solid entity out of, you know, if you want to make the transition, uh, the client basically gives you a warning saying that what you're creating right now is a solid entity and cannot be placed in a geometrical set and it automatically switches you to part body. And when you're, but the same notification is not given when you're creating a surface entity, it just switches it to the uh, geometrical set. So that's, that's a useful option to have it on. So if you just change this from in a body to in a geometrical set and say, okay, Whatever you create from now on is all going to be placed in a geometrical set. Okay, so now that you are in Ketia model simulation, uh, simulation model preparation, the first thing you want to do is um, you would want, so let's say that, okay, we're going to partition this into three regions. Uh, you're going to have a top region, a middle region, and a bottom region. So let's first create the top region so as i keep going you'll understand what the middle and bottom regions are so to ex so first create the the top region uh, i want to extract this particular curve right here not the face but this curve okay that curve um, so to do that go into the idealize section in the action bar so if you click anywhere the action bar expands and you can go and click the idealize action section and here you have this extract tool. So once you have the extract tool, you can go ahead and select only that edge and keep no propagation as your propagation type because if you have a uh, tangent continuity or point continuity, it's automatically going to detect all the adjacent elements and will start picking all the other entities. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's useful as well as, you know, sometimes it's not. So just be aware to turn that off and you can just say okay so if you notice in the tree we didn't have any geometrical set before but one is automatically created right now and the extract is placed in it so that's what the option does the other thing i want to do after extracting the, uh, the the curve is to extract the entire outer surface of the pipe so to do that go back into idealize extract select any face of the pipe and now you can go and choose the propagation to be point continuity so now it chooses the entire pipe you click ok so you have two extracts right now now the next step would be to project this curve that I'm highlighting on screen onto this surface of the extract so I'm going to deal only with surfaces right now so I can go ahead and hide the part body so that it doesn't interfere in my selection and let's go and do that. So to do that, uh, from the action bar switch to the create section, go into projection, uh, select the extract one as your, curve, as your curve you want to project and as your support select extract two and here under projection type change the direction from normal to along a direction and now we have to define this direction because the direction that you want it to project uh, does not coincide with the global y-axis it's about 45 degrees so we have to create a line that, that 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 basically points in the same direction as the normal of that surface so to do that uh, you don't have to exit the tool create a line and then come back you can just right click here and say insert wireframe and create a line so when you do that, uh, we now we need the two points to create the line, which we don't have. So we can create the points on the fly. So you can just right click again, insert wireframe and click create point. So here, choose on curve as your point type. Click this curve and choose middle point. So it's going to create a point right in the middle of the curve. Say okay. Similarly, 
right click on point 2 and choose circle sphere ellipse center so it doesn't matter which side it is you just need a point that points in that direction so that you can create the line so I'm just going to choose same same curve and automatically creates a point at the uh, circle center so now it creates a line and you can click OK so once you create a line it goes back into the projection definition uh, you can click on preview click OK so as you can see and let me hide extract one right now because I don't need that anymore so as you can see we have a patch that's been created on this extract essentially and if I expand project one you can see a line that's there that's hidden and if I expand the line you can see point one and point two so this method of creating um, wireframe entities stacked with another wireframe entities is called stack commands essentially and this this is not restricted to only creating wireframe entities but even when you're creating surfaces or other features uh, you always if you can right click at certain like if, if you need a point or if you need a line that's going to support in creating that surface you can always create those things on the fly you don't have to pre-create them and then go ahead and create the feature you want if you do it this way it kind of declutters the tree it's it's not going to create any confusion while selecting so you don't see a bunch of lines sitting there you don't see a bunch of points sitting there and then you have a project somewhere hidden in between uh, where here is just nicely stacked under the same command so that's the only difference um, so yeah so the next thing so now that we have this uh, this closed curve right here we want to fill that closed curve so that uh, we create a surface out of the curve so to do that um, in the create section of the action bar you have the fill tool click fill and click the project and click OK so you won't be able to see it I'll just show it to you if you hide this extract right here you can see that this is the surface that it, it created so now what you do is you right click part body and show that and hide the project now I did mention about something about volumes in the beginning so you can either create volumes by having a closed surface and then closing that surface and converting it into a volume or you can also apply uh, you can also use the split tool and select the solid under the part body straight away and it automatically creates the volume for you without even having to do uh, without even having to create a surface first and then closing it to create a volume so I'm just going to show you how to do that so go back into idealize and you have a split tool right here now here in the split definition select the part body as the element that you want to cut and as you're cutting element you would want to select the fill you basically are now trying to create the top region of the partition so when you create fill you can see that it's automatically picking the top half and if you see other side it picks the other side now um, if, if I say keep both sides right here and it's going to retain both the both the halves and if I say okay it's going to create a couple of surfaces but they are going to be nested within each other. Now, this is going to be hard to maintain, especially when you want explicitly only certain entities that you want to pick. Uh, it's easier if, if they are located as separate entities in the tree uh, so that you don't end up picking the wrong support by accident. So just delete this and create the split again. And right now, by default, it only creates surfaces, which but we need volumes. That's the thing. So do the same thing. Select part body, select the fill. Now, when I click on show parameters, expand this dialog box. You have a bunch of options right here. Here, the default option is surface. So the result is by default a surface. So anything that you create is just going to be an open surface. But if I choose volume and click OK, so right now it's going to retain only the top. So it's, it's going to split and create a volume that's only going to be the top. Click OK. You can see previously the split was in blue, but now it's actually in white, which basically is the difference between if it's a, if, if it's a, if it's a volume or if it's a surface. Uh, as you can see, a volume is actually stacked under the geometrical set. 
Now to view the volume, just right click part body and hide it. So you can see that this is, and right click the fill and hide it too, so you don't need it. So you can see that this is a closed, so this is a closed volume and you can treat it now as a partition. So now we need the other half of the split. So repeat the same process, select part body, select fill, say other side, show parameters, volume, okay. Now you can hide the part body again. So you can see that you have two splits, split three and split four. Now these are two volumes. Now you can call this, you can call split three as your top region and split four will be split once more to basically form the middle region and the bottom region. So now I'm just going to right click, say properties, go into feature properties and rename this as top region and hide it because I'm not going to be working on the top region anymore. Now I can do the same thing, rename this to meaning and keep that active. Now, now what we want to do is basically create a partition such that this region right there, if you just follow my mouse, understand. So take off this section so that that forms the middle region and then the rest of it will be the bottom region. So to do that, we need a couple of, so we need to create one line that goes all the way here, one line that goes all the way there, and you need a curve that joins both the lines, both the endpoints of the lines. So to do that, first we would, let's, let's extract this curve right now. Just like how we created the top region, we extracted this curve, that curve right there. So now we have to extract that curve and we can project it on this surface so that it forms a surface and then you can create the lines. So to do that, uh, in the idealized section, go into extract, so, uh, change the propagation type from point continuity to no propagation. Select that curve. As you can see, it's picking the remaining in edge four. So you're picking the right thing. Click OK. Click the extract again and extract this face because you want to project that curve on this face, essentially. OK. Now, again, uh, since you're going to project, you can create these two elements on the fly. Just like how I created the line, you can do the same way. but I'm just showing you how it's going to clutter the tree essentially. So that's why I wanted to do it this way. Uh, so now if you go back into the create section and click on project, do along a longer direction is fine. Choose the projected curve as that and your support as this extract right here. And as your direction, you just want it to go straight down. So you can either choose normal in this case, or you can just right click and choose Z component if you want to, but also you can pick any edge, any solid edge you want to define the direction. So you just have a vertical edge that's going down. So it's going to project the curve like that, essentially. So once you do that, you have two curves like that. And all you need to do right now is join these points and join these points with the line. So. Now what you can do is you can double click a line, double click the line command so that it pops up again. Once you create a line and again, you don't have to go and click this line again. The dialog box is still active. So point to point is fine. Select this point, select that point. And you can choose your support to be this face so that it lies on that face and click OK. And you can see that the definition, line definition box is still active because I double click the tool. You can go and click this point again and the support in that face, okay. Now you can cancel it because I don't need more lines. Now you have, this, right now you have a closed curve made out of four, point, four, four different curves. Now, I so just like how I created the top region where I created this fill using that project, now I need to create a fill using these two lines, that extract and this projected curve. Now to do that, you, I mean, you can either select them individually while filling it, or you can collectively select all of them by just joining all of them together as one curve. So to do that, go, go into the check and repair section of the action bar and click on join. Here, you can go ahead and select all these 
different entities that you want to join. So extract three is one that you want to join. You don't want extract four and it won't let you pick it also because it's a line and a surface. So you kind of know what it is. Uh, you need the projected curve, you need line two and you need line three. Click OK. So as you can see, you had those black points that were there that basically said that they were distinct lines. But now they've just changed into white ones because it's considering it to be as one big curve. And you can see all the elements that are that were used to define the join have all been hidden. And you have only the join that's active. So now what you do is you fill the surface just like how you did it for the top region. Go into create and click fill. Select the join. Say OK. You can hide the join right now. You can see that there is something there that's basically the surface and you can see the boundaries of the surface. Now we need to do the same thing just like how you split to create the top region but except that now you won't be selecting the part body as your support you'll be selecting remaining as your support because you are already have a volume here you don't need to again use part body and select and create new volumes. So to do that let's go back into idealize split select remaining as your element to cut and choose fill to. So right now you see that it's retaining the the other side instead of the middle region. Um, so you can just doesn't matter. So you can go to show parameters. Volume is selected by default. Say OK. And do the same operation to retain the other other piece. So do a split. Select remaining and choose fill to say other side. Make sure volume is selected and click OK. Right now, you have sand, and of course, when you create a new volume from an existing volume, the existing volume is hidden, so <clears throat> you don't need remaining anymore. So, all you have to do is now rename this just to avoid confusion as bottom region, even though it's not technically bottom, it's fine. Uh, here, this you can call it as middle region. So, there you have it, and I can right click and show top region and hide this extract and hide this fill. There you have it. So you have essentially three partitions called top, middle and bottom and you, now we can mesh each of these regions with hex elements. So to do that, now let's exit this app so that you go back into the meshing context. So you do that. So it takes you back into the uh, Simulia mesh right here. Follow my mouse. Uh, go into the mesh section of the action bar and click on speed 3D mesh right here. So when you do that, you can either select, I mean, now you don't have any problems because it's going to select volume by volume. So as you can see, selecting this volume right now, selecting that volume. So either you can select it from display or from the specification tree. So here it's picking top region. And the, the good thing is it automatically picks the source and target phases for you. So you don't really have to worry about the sweep direction. You don't have to worry about uh, picking the right face or you know what's going to happen and stuff like that. So it's going to pick the right face for you. Um, 10 millimeters is fine. I'm just going to give about three, three, three layers about the thickness. Let's just say mesh. And by default, it creates a quadrangle dominated mesh. So to go and change that, so there's this small tool called as 2D mesh parameters. So here, if you go and change it to quadrangles, say apply, okay, just mesh it again. Now it only has all quadrangles. Now, the the idea behind the sweep mesh is it when whichever surface it selects as a source, it internally will create a surface mesh on the source face, and then it will sweep it along the sweep directions uh, to basically create your uh, 3D mesh. So this control or this 2D mesh parameters right here controls how your surface mesh is created, which is why by default it was quadrangle dominant. So if you had seen this face, it would have had some triangles as well as some quads. So which basically when it was swept, it formed some wedges, uh, C3D6 as well as C3D8s. So now we only have C3D8s right here because I said only quadrangles. That's what happens. Um, now similarly, we can go ahead and create sweep meshes for the middle region and the bottom region. Let's go ahead and select the middle region. Then is fine again. 
uh, now it's, it's automatic. So in this case now, you can see sometimes it picks the right faces. Sometimes if it has a hard time, then of course uh, you can always, you always have the control to go and manually pick it. So in this case, I can just say remove all and remove all. So it's picking the target as those highlighted faces right there. So I, don't, I really don't want to sweep it in that direction. So I can now go and select this is my source, this is my target or vice versa, it doesn't matter. And now automatically this is going to be my sweep direction, it's going to sweep it along that, that curve. So I'll say I'll need about 10, 10 elements it, along that direction, say mesh. So as you can see, here again is quadrangle dominant, so just change it to quadrangles and mesh it. So it automatically changes such that it only keeps quadrangles and hex elements. Click OK. Now do the same thing with the bottom region. So here it's fine, it's picking the right faces that you want as your source and targets. Uh, 10 and 10 is fine. Say mesh it, it's fine. Uh, just want to check if it's created quadrangle dominance. There you go. Okay, and there you have it. So you have three hex meshes essentially for three different volumes, but right now these meshes don't have, uh, there's no compatibility between the meshes at the interfaces. Uh, they, I've just meshed them separately, but I've not actually told the, uh, the mesher to use the other mesher so that it forms like a continuous mesh at the interface. So to prevent rapid mesh transitions in this case, as you can see right here, the, the nodes don't mesh. So to prevent rapid mesh transitions, what we can do is we can go ahead and tie these regions together so that the underlying mesh is automatically, it, it becomes compatible so that you start tying them. So to do that, uh, just hide all the all the three meshes that you've created. So right click nodes and elements and just say hide. So I need to pick the faces in order to tie them. So I don't need the meshes right now. So to create tie connections from the fixed area of the action bar, go back into modeling. And here, go into connections. To create a tie connection, just click tie. Uh, you can basically expand the geometrical set right here. So you want to tie the, the bottom face of the top region and the top face of the middle region. So it doesn't matter. So I can just go and hide the middle region. So that I only have the top region and bottom active. Pick that face as my first entity. Now you can go back, go back to the tree, show the middle region and hide the top region and pick this face as my support tool. And once it's creating, you can see that it's picking support two as my slave and support one as my master. Just, just fine. If you have to swap it, you can swap it depending on the mesh density. It's fine. And you click OK. So there you have, you have one tie connection. That's done. Now the other tie connection would be the, the, the back face of the middle region and the other face of the bottom region. So in this case, I don't, I don't need the top region anymore. So I'm just going to hide it. Create another tie connection. Right click bottom region, hide it, select that face and here show, hide the middle region and show the bottom region and select that face. Okay. So again, depending on the mesh density, you can choose which one you want as a master or slave and click OK. So there you go. So essentially now you have three regions that are hex mesh and there's no problem about rapid mesh transitions because we have tied them together. That's excellent. Thank you very much. I have a couple questions. The first one is you mentioned for master slave for the tie that if I had different mesh densities, I might want to choose one or the other. What's the rule for that? Uh, if you have a coarser mesh, then you would choose it as your master and a final mesh would be your slave. Thank you. So in this case, I, I mean, I just showed you how to create tie connections, but if yes. I have to be really picky, then I would, so it's probably three layers. So in this case, I'd choose this one as my master and this one as my slave. It just I just have to, or the other way around, I just have to see which one it is. But the general rule of thumb is if you have a coarser mesh, then you would choose that as your master. The final one always goes as your slave. Excellent. Thank you. So another question I had was, 
Um, can you revisit the topic a little bit of the volumes versus the part body and what was the advantage to having the volumes and maybe a little bit more about what the relationship is between the volume and the part body? Okay, so as I said, volumes are essentially children of existing solids. So any changes that you make to the uh, existing solid would automatically get reflected to all the children. So in that case, let's, I'll just show you what I meant. I can go and right click, hide that, hide these things, show the part body right now. So here in the part body, let's open one feature. Let's say I'm going to extend uh, or increase the length of this pipe right here. Let me see which one that is. Expand that. So it automatically takes me to simulation model prep. So here I have 229. Let's make it 300. So I'm just making it longer, just a little bit. Okay. So when I do that, as you can see, this edge just become longer and I didn't get any errors regarding updates because it's automatically updated everything. So when I hide the part body and I show the geometrical set, you can see that the changes have been propagated automatically. It's just longer right now. Great. But when I right click and show the mesh, ah. you can see that the mesh has not yet been updated because it's, it, yeah, you need to basically manually update the mesh because it's not related straight away. The, so when you're updating the geometry, all geometrical entities are automatically updated, but not the mesh. So you'll have to do the mesh separately. So to do that, uh, double click nodes and elements to go back into st uh, structural model create, right click here and say update all meshes. Once you do that, the meshes are automatically updated depending on any geometric changes. Uh, so now, so this is one of the reasons why I said volumes, essentially what changes you make in the part body automatically gets ref reflected to all the volumes. So since you created the meshes based on the volumes, you can automatically do that. And the, then clearly when you show yeah. just the part body, the part body doesn't reflect that the volumes are there at all. It doesn't care. It doesn't really know. It, it doesn't really care at all because the, you have no reference to any volumes here in the part body. It's all right here under the geometrical set. So it shouldn't be a problem. Now the other advantage is, now I can have how many ever geometrical sets I want. I can have how many ever orientations of partitions I want in this case. So this is just one version of partitioning. I can just have another version where I just have two partitions. But I can still have the same solid intact. So you can have n number of geometrical sets containing n different variations of partitions. And you can still have the existing part body. So I'll show you one more quick thing what I mean. So I'm not going to create another partition, but I'm just going to create another FEM representation. Yeah. So go back, double click this to go back in the assembly design. I click insert new finite element model. So I'm just going to insert another finite element model right here. So here, this one already has it. So I'm just going to write, uh, rename this. I'm just going to rename this to say, partitions so that I don't end up meshing the wrong thing. And here under final element model, uh, you do the same thing, properties and say original. Original refers to the part body, partition refers to the geometrical set, just for clarification. Now make sure you are under original, so double click that so that the context automatically switches to original. And here, just go into meshing, just mesh it with tet elements, it doesn't matter what you're meshing right now. Now, the original still has the the volumes. It could be associated with the volumes from the geometric set, right? Yes, you can. Yeah. You can. It's just that I can, I can still select bottom region right here. When you're doing the meshing. Right. I can still ah, do it. It doesn't okay. matter. But my point is, you can have how many ever mesh containers like these, and you can associate every mesh container to every part body or every version of the partitions that you have. So I can have n number of... Uh, FEM representations each pointing to one of the partitions that I have and I can still have my part body mesh. You yeah. can do like a nice mesh study here, like a mesh convergence study. You can do something like that, uh, something that I can think of right now. So if I just mesh this, so you can see both, that's overlaid. So if I right click here and hide, you can see a very coarse mesh that I've, I've just created right now. So th th that's my point. So you can have... Yeah, useful so, for proof of concept. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about uh, changing 
any geometry because you're, you're creating all these volumes. You still have your existing geometry intact and you can have n number of geometrical sets as you want, as I said. And you can have their corresponding meshes. And of course, you can create n number of simulations depending upon how many other femrips you have and each points to one femrip. And then you can assign loads and boundary conditions just like your normal simulation. Excellent. That is really powerful. Thank that you. Is. Yep, no problem.